I want to welcome Jake to the stage to share his amazing story. All right, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. Appreciate the award. I said no to it twice um, before I decided to uh, accept it. And the reason I decided to accept it on behalf of our company uh, was this is an opportunity for me to pay it forward. I have learned from a lot of people um, over the last uh, 10 or 11 years um, how to put this thing together and how to be successful. And uh, so what I want to do today uh, is share that with you. Vice President of Human Resources, I know that sounds glamorous. Um, I'm also the benefits manager. We have no benefits people. I'm also the training and development manager. We don't have a director of training and development. I'm also the EHS manager. We don't have uh, those kinds of resources and they, I would call us a, a mid-size uh, family owned and operated company. So I have some disclaimers that I'd like to go through. And first and foremost, uh, Rice Lake Wing Systems is not a customer of Self Fund Health who's putting on this event. Um, <clears throat> but I believe in what they're doing, right? Um, and I know Matt, and I know John, and, and Ben. Where's Ben? There he is. <laughs> so a quick story. Um, I don't take many calls. I get a lot in a day, uh, especially cold calls. And one day, uh, out of the blue, I decided to pick it up, because sometimes I like to yank their chain, especially if it's brokers, telling me how I can do things better, right? But I pick it up, and it's Ben, and he's telling me, hey, I got this product, and I'd like to sell it to you. It was before he was with Self Fund Health, so we got into a conversation. Uh, that led to a meeting. That led to us changing from Aflac to uh, the uh, voluntary benefits that he was selling at the time, and that's how I got to know Ben. And I asked him, I said, Ben, if I hire you, will you do what you said you're going to do? And he said, yes, absolutely. And he has uh, since that day. Right? So that was the start of a good relationship, a good partnership. Uh, second, uh, I want to disclose that I am on the board of directors at the Alliance. Um, they're a big part of our success. Uh, we have some members from the Alliance here today. Mike's back there, Mike Roach. OK. Um, and Bobby Joe, somewhere in here. OK. So anyway, there's people from the Alliance here. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. My wife is a mid-level in dermatology from Marshall Clinic. Um, so I get to hear about benefits when I get home from work too. Um, I also want to talk about the fact that everything that I know I learned, right? and I learned it from somebody else. And if I learned it from somebody else, that means I stole it. Right? And I took it and I made it mine. I made it work for my organization and so can you. And so... <clears throat> What you're going to hear from me today is, um, if you're one of the employers, let's see the hands of the employer so I can talk directly to you. All right, good. And if you are, how many of you are still um, fully self-insured? Anybody brave enough to, okay. This is really for you, right? I'm sorry, fully insured. Fully insured. All right, a few of you. Okay, this is for you. Right? Because I remember going to conferences like this, and I would see ideas, and I would, I would take them back to my company. Hey, can we do this? Can we put this into our plan? But nobody ever really put it together, right, like Self Fund Health has, um, and said, you need to do this, 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 and this, and you'll probably be successful. So I'm speaking to you. For everybody else in the room, I want you to hear me as the voice of the customer, right? The red thread that runs through Rice Lake Weighing Systems is our founder said, if you take care of the customer, the rest of the business will take care of itself. We do customer service like nobody else on earth, right? And that fl flows through into our expectations of our partners, of our employees. Um, and so you'll see that today. I have very high standards um, for customer service from our partners. And I want you to hear that because I am the ultimate payer. I pay the partners, I pay the claims, right? I pay, right? And the guy, right, the guy whose uh, checkbook it's coming out of, he's my boss, but he's also my friend, and, he, and his office is next door to mine. I see him, I have to look him in the eye every day, right? So, voice of the customer. All right, so I can't tell uh, Rice Lake's story without telling a little bit of my own. Um, so I started out, this thing it really doesn't like me, uh, as an architecture major uh, at Iowa State University. Where's Cyclone? All right. 
Um, then I transferred to Northern Illinois University where I got into human resource management. Um, ultimately, uh, I went to the University of Miami, um, received an MBA in human resource management and a master's degree in business law. Um, and so has anybody ever actually met somebody who went to the U? All right, a couple people. Now everybody else has, all right. So what's with the map? <clears throat> so after I graduated, I was working in Miami. I came home one night um, and there was a guy in my house stealing my stuff and he had a gun. True story. The next day, I gave all my stuff away and I left Miami for good. And I started driving, I went home and I stopped and I saw my parents. I went out west for a while and then ultimately I ended up going to Alaska. And I said, well, if I'm going to go to Alaska, I'm going to do this full tilt and I'm going to go all the way to Prudhoe Bay. And so I drove the haul road all the, all the way. So I drove from Miami to the Arctic Circle and back and then I started my career. <laughs> this thing really is terrible. So I'm pressing it. All right, so career learning along the way. Um, I started out at Fortune Brands in Chicago, um, and I was lucky enough to have a, a great boss who put up with me because when I got there, I said, as Charlie would say, and benefits are what now? Right? I'm a 24-year-old. Um, I've always been on my parents' benefits. I've never, I might have had a chapter in one of my HR classes about benefits. I didn't know anything. I didn't know the difference between a pension and a 401k. Uh, I didn't know about health insurance. I didn't know about ancillary benefits. I didn't know any of that. But they gave me a title as a benefits analyst. And the next three years, I learned a lot. Um, went on to Waterloo Industries. And the big learning there was um, that change takes risk. We were one of the first companies to uh, put a tobacco user's premium into our plan. Pre-ACA, premium, right? Post ACA discount, non tobacco users discount. Um, and then moving on, um, I went to Rubbermaid, a couple steps there, um, and I had a great leader there, the best leader I've ever been around. His name was Jim Lavish, and he said, uh, Jake, you're really good at HR, you're really good at checking the boxes, you're really good at employee handbooks, you're really good at, at this stuff, but if you don't understand the people, if you don't remember the people, this is as far as you're gonna go. And so I took that to heart. And I've always remembered the people and everything that we do. How does it affect them, right? If you're going to make a plan design change, uh, you have to be empathetic. You have to put yourself in their shoes. What does it mean? It is not always a financial decision. And then moving along, uh, GKN, my boss was in the UK, didn't have, why are you spending so much bloody money on benefits, right? Didn't understand. Um, so I had to explain that. Um, and then I spent about 10 years uh, doing mission-directed work teams, uh, teaching investment in excellence, um, and lean enterprise. Um, all those things. I became an efficiency expert, right? And then I see all the waste that, that there is in healthcare, all the different levels, all the things, right? When you teach lean, right, don't ever do anything that the customer is not willing to pay for, right? Do you really need that warming blanket? Right? When you're in, uh, in the waiting room, do you really need those things? So that's a big part of who I am today. Um, and we all make mistakes. <laughs> I uh, went to work for uh, one of my clients in Wyoming. Um, and the, that's where I first learned the word megalomania. Right? That a guy who sunk $100 million of his own money into a company was willing to fly it into the side of a mountain uh, instead of admitting that he was wrong. Right? And for the first time in my life since I was eight years old, I didn't have a job. All right. So move back. Um, well, first, a little bit about Rice Lake Weighing Systems. Uh, Rice Lake, it's way up here, four and a half hours north of here, right? North of Green Bay, north of Minneapolis, where people from Milwaukee go on vacation, right? Yeah? And you'll notice from the map we don't have roads. <laughs> Um, so Rice Lake Weighing Systems, founded in 1946. Uh, it's owned by the Johnson family. We have grown. We had less than 400 employees when I started 13 and a half years ago. We have 1,500 now, um, 700 domestic, 800 international, 
It has become a fairly good size uh, company, fairly complex. Um, and we have 28 uh, employees in 28 states and 21 countries. So what do we do? Well, we make weighing systems, okay? Stop looking at the truck. Please focus on the scale it's down here, right? And we make all kinds of scales, um, everything that you can imagine from a, a spring-loaded kitchen counter uh, scale to uh, giant truck scales and train scales and everything in between. If you had uh, cereal for breakfast this morning, um, that box of cereal, the contents of it were weighed on average 80 times from the time it was a grain of corn until it got to your bowl. Um, so weighing is everywhere, um, but most people don't see it or notice it. Okay, and so I said part of my objective today was to, to share some things with you. Um, some of them are healthcare related, some of them are not. Um, but the whole reason that the weighing industry exists is a fair exchange of value, right? When you're a seller, you want to sell exactly what the customer is paying for. So think about a pound of turkey at a deli counter. And if you're the customer, you want to get what you're paying for. So it's this fair exchange of value. It's the whole reason that the weighing system uh, got started, right? Beam and balance. Um, and it's the reason that it exists today, fair exchange of value. Isn't that what we're really trying to uh, get to here with this conference, with this rebellion, with this revolt, with, with what we're trying to do is a fair exchange of value? Nobody is saying free. Nobody expects healthcare to be free, but we don't want it to be exorbitant. We won't, don't want it to put people into bankruptcy. Right? It needs to be a fair exchange of value. And I do this all the time. I keep threatening to get a, a fulcrum tattooed on my chest because I do this all the time. I do it between uh, our plan and our partners. I do it between our owners and our employees. I do it, and I am always in the middle. Right? <clears throat> And of all you employers, if you're not willing to be in the middle, right, you don't have a choice. You're going to have to be in the middle. You're going to have to be the fulcrum. You're going to have to be the one that balances those decisions. And sometimes, right, I'm on this side, and our CFO is on this side. Right? And that puts somebody else in the middle. But um, I think this is what we're trying to get, uh, is, get to, is this free market ideal. All right, so we have a timeline. And I arrived at Rice Lake Wang Systems in 2011. I uh, had some really good advice, right? Two, two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Use them in that proportion for the first year. Um, and so I was watching and I was listening. I didn't say very much. Um, but one of the things I did say was, you're not self-insured, right? Had almost 400 employees and uh, you know, it, it was just mind-boggling to me. And I had to go way back in my career to when I had a fully insured plan, I had forgotten uh, all of the fun things like the renewals and uh, utilization and all those uh, words that you needed to know to, uh, to have a fully insured plan. And so I put together a plan and it didn't have all the components of what we have today, um, but it had a lot of them. And I presented it to our owners, uh, very fiscally conservative uh, people, and they liked, um, knowing what the number was versus the, the risk that they perceived in going self-insured. So, hey, it's their company, okay, I gave them an option, they said no. Um, so we go to 2012, right? my first opportunity to meet with our consultant, um, and I sat there and I listened, and I watched this exchange between our consultant who had been there for 10 years, coming every year to give them the news, 7%, 11%, 15%, 6%. Right, giving, the, giving them the news. And I, I, I watched, it was like ping pong, right? And I watched that consultant, and whatever way the wind was blowing, right, whatever way our owner was leaning, well, I don't know if we're really ready. Yeah, you probably don't need to do this, right? And so we got done with that meeting, and I was just like, Mark, our, our, our consultant is a windsock. If you would have said, yeah, we, it's time to go self-insured, they'd be like, damn right it is, right? <laughs> Um, so we fired him. Uh, the next big event, attending innovations in healthcare. Uh, for those of you uh, who know Natasha Plank, anybody? 
Yeah, a bunch of people in here. Uh, she is one of the true pioneers, uh, and uh, Ross Biella and others, they were at UW-Stout giving this, um, it was four hours a day, uh, one day a week for four weeks. And we went and we attended. And I talked our CEO into going. And sometimes you need a third-party expert to come and convince uh, you know, your leadership team that this is what you need to do, right? This is the opportunity. Um, and so I convinced him to go, and we went down. We had great conversations coming back. And he's just like, oh, we, we really should look into this. It's something that we should really consider doing. And <clears throat> I was quietly thinking to myself, well, I told you most of this stuff two years ago, but um, okay. Um, but we still didn't do it. Um, but some of the learning uh, from innovations in healthcare, um, these are my notes, literally. I went back and I found them, and I cut and pasted them in here. And I'm like, what of what, what the things on that list have we done? And we've done almost all of them. The only place is the disease management and data analytics. We have the tools, but we haven't really used them. Um, and that's forward-looking. That's something... Uh, it's still an opportunity, long-term health outcomes. Um, and so that's still an opportunity for us. Um, telemedicine, we've tried twice. Uh, we're in our third trial of te telemedicine right now. Um, you know, I think for most people like, uh, like to go and see somebody in person and have that personal touch. And so it's kind of hit and miss. But all the other things uh, we have done. And the one thing I remember Natasha saying is, no discounting, right? And I'm going to explain why in a second. But all of this information was, was stolen, right? I took it from somebody. I'm not giving it back, so I can't call it borrowed. It was stolen. Um, but now I'm giving it all to you, all right? And any of you, uh, if you email me, if you call me, I will share this. I always have um, because it's not mine. All right. Share learning number two. I wish somebody would have explained to me how reference-based pricing works. So I'm going to do it here real quick. All right? This will be fun. So in this case, in this example, the reference base is Medicare. All right? <clears throat> Percent of Medicare, when you hear that, um, and some people referenced it yesterday, that uh, you know, Wisconsin is, on average, 300% of, of Medicare. Right? That means three times as much as the Medicare reimbursement rate, so percent of Medicare. Next, the charge master, right? This is the list price. This is, this is uh, all evil in medicine, right? Because they can be whatever they want it to be. And not, well, we have price transparency, right? Yeah, they're going to just tell you what their, what their price is, and they're going to put it out there, but it still can be whatever they want it to be. And then this is your discount, right? What does that mean? Well, for most people, um, if you have a self-insured plan, you have a PPO network, preferred provider organization, PPO network. Um, and so that equates to your savings. But we need to do more. Right? And what we're trying to get to um, is this idea of contracted savings. And when Natasha said no discounting, right, you want a contracted price. When you go to buy a car... You want to know what the price is. You don't say, oh, you just give me that car and I'll pay whatever you want. And that's how health care works unless you have a contract. So contracted savings. And I am maybe the biggest proponent in the state of bundled contracts. I want to know exactly what we're paying. And, I, and if I agree to that, I will pay that, but not a penny more. I hate fee-for-service. I hate systematic upcharging. I hate all the add-ons, all those things. I, the fact of the matter is, I just don't trust healthcare. I don't. For a long time, right, including our partners, including me, what we were doing is we were comparing what we were paying with our contracted prices to maybe what we were paying in the PPO network. Or sometimes they'll say um, they would compare it to uh, what you would have paid if you went to Mayo Clinic. Well, you would have paid $70,000 if you had that knee replacement done at Mayo Clinic, but we're gonna do, we did it for $40,000, so you saved thirty. dollars um, And back then, that was, uh, that was enough. When we first got into this, when we first started our plan, um, those savings were enough. But then, uh, price leaders started to emerge, right? And we heard about one yesterday, Oklahoma Surgery Center, and even to me, those numbers were like, oh my goodness. 
right? I'm, I'm missing something here because they're better than uh, our best contracted price in Wisconsin. And so that might be an option. So I want to look at comparing to the price leader. What are you charging versus the price leader? I don't want to know how much, don't keep telling me how much I'm saving over a hospital system. Tell me how much more I'm spending over the price leader. I know I just got some cringe, cringy looks from some of the medical providers in here, but hey, it's the truth, voice of the customer. Um, one of the interesting things that's happening now um, is that we have had some of our contracted partners um, who are charging less than Medicare, 0.8, 0.9%, right? Less than Medicare on their, uh, for what they're charging. So the whole thing is dynamic, it is evolving, um, but I hope that helps some of you uh, understand how reference-based pricing works. All right, back to the timeline. 2014, we're sitting in our boardroom and uh, uh, Medica was there, a United Healthcare company. Little old Barron County, you saw where we are, Northwest Wisconsin, 40,000 people in the county. And they came in and they told us that we had the highest cost of health care in the country per capita. Well, how can that be? I'll tell you how that can be. We had Marshfield Clinic Health Systems expanding from east to west. And we had a, a regional trauma center built in Rice Lake, which is great. Love to have it. It's where my wife works. Um, and then from west to east, we had Mayo Clinic Health Systems um, expanding. And there's a hospital in Barron. There's a Mayo Clinic clinic uh, in Rice Lake. Um, and so, and neither of them were willing to compete on price. That's how we got to the highest cost of health care in the country. Oh, geez. <laughs> I never cry when I did practice my presentation either, but... Um, and then this happened. So a 23-year-old texting and driving, going 30 miles an hour over the speed limit, runs a rural country stop sign. Um, my wife and I were taking our three youngest kids to go watch my oldest kid play football. Yeah. So that driver su suffered life-threatening injuries. The people who first responded to, uh, to us thought he was dead. And that is my public service announcement for texting and driving, do not do it, ever, okay? So Riley was playing, uh, two little kids were in the far back seats, way back here. Um, they were scared, but they were okay. Um, my middle son, Mason, um, he had some seat belt, uh, maybe related injuries, and they wanted to send them to Children's uh, in Minneapolis. I had a broken left leg, and my wife had numerous injuries. My wife was far more seriously hurt than I was, and, but they needed somebody, a parent, to go with Mason to Children's. I got a broken leg, I'm splinted up, um, didn't feel really good, um, but the decision was made that I would ride in the ambulance with Mason to uh, Children's, and my wife was being sent to Luther, uh, Mayo Luther in Eau Claire, and I would meet back up with her there when one of our family members could get over to the cities and then I would get over to the, right, with my broken leg. So, as it turns out, my wife and I had the exact same injury, right? We had a fracture of the tibial plateau, um, bracing, right, because we both saw the, uh, the vehicle coming through the intersection. We both braced, um, so we both broke our left legs. Same injury, same doctor, same facility, same surgery, same plates and screws. Same price? All right, any guess on, on the difference? And I will, let me stipulate, right, because I am who I am, and when I got started getting the bills and they came in, I started feeding them into a spreadsheet. I will also say, for all you know-it-alls in here, this does not go uh, get charged to health insurance. It doesn't get charged to your plan. It gets charged to the, in, to the auto insurance, right? So I'm an unbiased uh, person when it comes to this, right? I can look at this data and look at it objectively. Um, but I put it in the spreadsheet. So any guesses on, 
uh, how big a difference it, it might have been? Oh, you were waving at somebody, not volunteering. More. More. $60,000 difference between hers and mine. And it wasn't even my bill. I didn't even, I didn't have any responsibility for it, but I started making calls. I'm like, hey, wh what is going on here? How can there be so much difference? And you're know, like, and now, and it wasn't the first time, it won't be the last, but you know, you, you don't understand healthcare, right? <laughs> I get that a lot. So anyway, um, that was, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, we weren't quite into the rebellion yet. Um, but it was a, a good reminder. It was a good starting point. It was a launching point that, hey, we need to get into this because we're getting taken advantage of. So 2015, um, Mayo Health Traditions, right? Narrow network. I did not want to do it. Right? Our a friend of a friend of our owner said, hey, there's this new thing at Mayo. It's going to be great. You're going to save a lot of money. Da, da, da. You should tell Jake to, to look into this. And I was directed to do it. I said, this is a bad idea. right? When you eliminate choice, it's going to be a bad idea. And then I get a call. And my phone said, Mayo Clinic. And I'm like, hello? And they said, um, yeah, I'm not going to tell you who I am, but I'm calling from Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not ready. It's, it, they're, they're, they can't handle a group of your size, uh, and, it, and it's going to fail. And so I went, and I, I told the owners, I said, hey, I got this call. And I, yeah, but that's probably just some broker who's you know, pissed off, and they wanted your business and, and telling you to do something else and all this stuff. And we ended up doing it. It was horrible. Um, but it took that uh, catastrophic year, right, 151% utilization um, and 45% increase, right? Because the first time they come in, it's not the real number, right? But we were fortunate enough, we were saved by a rate cap. Um, all you uh, insured groups, I hope you have rate caps protecting yourself. Um, but it was the crisis that we needed to do something different. Um, and so we started working on, uh, on the new health plan. So all through 2016, I'm working on this, um, you know, starting to set up the clinic and do the plan design and all working on these things. And I started calling it healthy choices. And I thought that was kind of snappy, right? What do you want people to do? Well, you want, we want them to make healthy choices, right? And I'm, I'm going along and I'm using this. And um, one day my boss said, he's like, stop calling it that. I'm like, what? He's like, healthy choices. I'm like, why? And I think it's pretty good. And he said, it sounds like a loaf of bread. <laughs> and as it turns out, it is. And so I said, okay, Mark, what do you want? What, what behaviors are you trying to drive? What do you want people to do? And he thought, sat there and he thought about it for a minute. And he said, I want people to take control of their health. I said, what did you say? He said, I want people to take control of their health. And so that's what we named a plan. It's the take control of your health plan, right? That's the behavior that we're looking for. That's what we want people to do. We want people to get involved. We don't want people to wait. Um, and it has a great double entendre, right? Because the next part is take control of your health plan. That was up to us, right? The benefits people, the benefits committee, that's, that's us. Me, the plan administrator, taking control of our health plan. But my mentor said, right, the goal comes first, and then you backfill how. Far too often, we don't even let ourselves set the goal because we, 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 because we don't know how. But that's the whole point of setting the goal in the first place. And then we backfill. And so we started backfilling. And so how has our plan evolved over the years? In 2016, we started, we bought a, um, a dental clinic and we turned it into uh, our health clinic, Cedar Ridge. And it was Cedar Ridge Dental and now it's Cedar Ridge Health Center um, because we are so frugal in the Northland that they didn't want to have to change the sign. 
Um, we started doing private direct contracting in the small town. Everybody knows everybody. There's 10,000 people in Rice Lake. Um, <clears throat> and so I knew uh, the guy who owned Optimum Therapy. And so we started talking about, you know, how could we make this a win-win? And we did it on a spreadsheet and a handshake. And that contract still exists today. We did the same thing with diagnostic radiology and others in our community. Um, and it wasn't this big, scary thing. But as it evolves, at some point, you don't want to, I didn't want to hold those contracts any longer. Um, and so now they reside with the Alliance. Um, in 2018, we added the wellness incentive and care navigation. Uh, Alethius has been a great partner of ours over the years. Um, and so uh, started with Ross and his group uh, at that time. Um, in 2018, we joined the, the Alliance, but 2019 was our first full year with them. Uh, we also tried to pilot with MD Live, all right, telemedicine. Um, uh, we had it for one year and then dropped it. It didn't work out so well. In 2020, uh, we changed uh, partners uh, for our direct primary care uh, clinic. Uh, we changed from a company that rhymes with care here uh, to Neopath Health. And Neopath has been a great uh, partner of ours ever since. Uh, I see Katie sitting over there. Is Joe here? Joe's over there standing. All right, from Neopath Health. They've been great partners uh, for our private uh, direct primary care clinic. 2021, a limit, eliminated Mayo Clinic Health Systems as an in-network option. This was a big deal, right? A lot of, a lot of Mayo fans in Northwest Wisconsin and, uh, but we did it the right way. We gave advance warning, hey, we're gonna do this. Um, you know, and I felt it was the, our fiduciary duty for our plan uh, because it is the most expensive healthcare in the world. When you look at the RAND study and it says 600% of, uh, of Medicare, that's six times. That's twice the state average. Um, and it took a lot of persuading because my boss wanted to go to Mayo Clinic and I said, you can afford to go out of network, right? <laughs> it's a million dollar a year decision for our health plan, right? Some people argue it's the best health care in the world, but at a price. 2022, we moved to RX Benefits, uh, who's also a, uh, a sponsor here today. Um, in 2023, we did a third-party uh, RFP um, for our third-party administrator. We also uh, started looking at uh, captives for our stop-loss insurance. Um, I could stand up here for a half hour and tell you how much I hate stop-loss and how corrupt it is and awful, and, um, but it's part of what you have to do unless you're big enough to go fully uh, self-insured. So, and we did join the stop-loss captive this year. This year, we insourced care navigation into our clinic. Our uh, MA uh, was doing our, and it's great, right? Because one plan uh, knows the patients, knows uh, who our uh, partners are, um, really efficient to go from your provider to the MA. If somebody, you know, they're reach that magic number and need a colonoscopy, uh, they go out, they get signed up right away, they go right to it. And so um, that was uh, really good for us. We are also doing pilots with ACOS, which is virtual direct primary care, uh, so far with mixed results. And then Solarte Health, where's AJ? Back there. Uh, another pilot study for us because I want more bundled contracts uh, and I want more availability. And it gave us an opportunity for our uh, employees that are outside of Wisconsin to perhaps participate in uh, the bundled contracting. All right. <laughs> Shared learning number three. This one's just kind of fun and because I like to pick on the brokers, especially those who work on commission. And uh, <laughs> so um, how does a broker make more money, right? How does somebody who gets paid on commission make more money? When their price goes up, right? If your health care, if, if it's your health plan, they're paid on commission. Um, the worse your plan does, the better they do. So what is their incentive to help you? Remember that. A freebie for today right, for all those who have responsibility for other benefits, ancillary benefits, and if they're based on wages, um, if your company's like ours and we do merit increases every year, three to 5%, something like that, so everybody almost is getting a, a pay increase, and if they're, uh, what you're paying is based on wages, uh, 
your insurer is automatically getting an increase every year. So if they come back to you this year and say, uh, yeah, we, we're going to need a 6% increase on this, you say you already got it and just say no. We haven't had an increase to our ancillary benefit uh, prices in 10 years. All right. Now what the 90 people in the room want to know um, is what does our plan look like? And so, um, first of all, you have to go self-insured. And there's no reason to do this if you're not self-insured. Uh, if, you, if you're fully insured and you, and you start a clinic, you're just helping them save money, not yourself. So um, the biggest thing is access to your data, especially the pricing data. And, um, but also, uh, you can get other data um, looking for trends and those kinds of things. Um, I've already stipulated that we're not very good at it yet, um, but it's there. You'll have to get a TPA. Uh, you're not going to process your claims yourself. Uh, they'll help you with your plan documents and your compliance. Uh, and again, the worst part of it is uh, the stop loss reinsurance uh, portion, which feels like you're still insured. Um, and I just, I hate it. Right, because if you have a great year, your experience rating, they come back and, and you've had a really good year and you're like 0.5, you know, half of what is expected and you're like, we're gonna get a refund, right? And they're like, well, statistically, you're due for a, to have a bad year, so we're gonna give you an increase. And then if you have a bad year, then, then it gets really bad. Uh, I just uh, don't care for it very much. I think there's a better way. I hope some, uh, before I retire, that there is a, uh, a non-for-profit statewide stop loss captive that we can all join um, and help each other out. So number two is plan design. Um, it's really important. And the things you have to take away is steerage. What do you want people to, to do? Where do you want them to go? Um, I still believe in choice. Uh, they have to have choice. If they want to keep doing what they've always been doing, we've always allowed our uh, uh, plan members to do that. Um, but really focusing on the behaviors that you're trying to drive. This is our plan design. I will share it with anybody in the room if you're interested in this uh, so you don't have to take pictures of it or, <laughs> um, or write it down real fast, but I'm gonna just go through it quickly. Um, if you go to our uh, health center, there is no cost for anything that's done there, and we go way beyond uh, uh, just basic primary care. Um, we do uh, injections, we do um, allergies, we do uh, immunizations, we do all kinds of things there that are, are beyond uh, direct primary care. Um, but there's never been, nobody who's ever gone there has ever been charged one penny. If you use our con contracted care network with the Alliance, so that's tier one, those are bundled contracts. If you go there, no deductible, no coinsurance. Um, you know, early on we kept hearing, oh, you need to incentivize people to do this. You need to pay for their mileage. You need to pay for their hotel. You need to give them a paid day off to do that. And that's all a bunch of BS, right? Free is a great motivator. Um, and it's all we've had to do. Um, our people appreciate it. They understand it. And now when we don't have a bundled contract, people get pissed, right? Because they want it for free. Because they can go to the health center for free. They can get uh, most of their... Uh, other needs covered for free, and when they have to pay for something, uh, they're not very happy. Uh, tier two is the Alliance Premier Network. Uh, for us, that's Marshfield Clinic and UW Health. Uh, UW Health uh, was a great alternative to Mayo Clinic Health Systems, right? It is widely regarded as the best healthcare in the state of Wisconsin, um, if you can get in. So, uh, sorry. Sometimes I wear my heart on my sleeve. So, um, tier three for us is the rest of the Alliance Network. And then you're like, well, what about all your people outside of Wisconsin? Now, all of our people outside of Wisconsin, um, are, we have out of area PPOs for them. Um, well, they don't have access to your clinic. Well, yeah, but you, under the ACA, you can go and get uh, a lot of your preventative things taken care of for free. And all of our out of area people have benefited uh, from what we have done in Wisconsin because they have not had a rate increase in nine years. So what we're doing here is funding our out-of-state people. Um, and then out-of-network. One last thing, uh, for uh, several years we had a tier four, we had a wrap network, um, just because you know, we didn't know. Uh, we ended up spending more that year in PPO access fees than we did in claims. And so we eliminated that tier and uh, have all of our eggs in the Alliance basket. 
All right, share learning number four. Uh, real quickly, workers' compensation, um, you know, it's not under your health plan, but um, it's expensive. And in Wisconsin, you can't direct care, which is the biggest thing um, that we need to get past uh, because when you have these contracts and you send them out and all of a sudden you get a, a $32,000 carpal tunnel release, should be what? 35. Yeah. All right. Less. 25. 1350? <laughs> Feels like a negotiation. All right. Um, but you see some of these. These are recent. These are within the last uh, six weeks or so since I've been uh, covering for environmental health and safety and, and digging down into the numbers. Um, but it's very difficult to steer to centers of value. Sometimes you'll have a, an employee come to you and say, well, where, where should I go? What should I do? Um, that's your opportunity to, uh, to get them to go. And then the next step is to get your partners to recognize, hey, this is a, this is a procedure. This is the contract says they will come cover workers' comp. Don't bill it to me at list price. Um, and so you have to go through some of those uh, hurdles. So make sure your contact, contracts cover workers' compensation and make sure that you're talking to your politicians. Um, our local assemblyman guaranteed me for the third year in a row um, that workers' comp reform is going to be on the agenda this next legislative session. All right, um, the third part of our plan design, educating consumers. Um, we go to extraordinary lengths at Rice Lake Weighing Systems to educate our consumers. And it starts with the first meeting. When somebody is first hired, um, they, if they make really good choices that time, if they understand the plan, if they understand, if you have questions, you know, ask. Ask somebody in HR. They're all subject matter as experts. Um, so that first meeting is really, really important. Uh, where my wife works, they get an email that says sign up by this date. Um, so we do all kinds of things. Um, mailings to spouses, annual open enrollment meetings um, with all of our employees. And our goal is to have 100% contact with everybody every year. Uh, direct primary care, uh, again, our partner is Neopath Health, um, Cedar Ridge Health Center. This is really, really important. It is the center of the benefits universe for us, uh, healthcare benefits universe. And <clears throat> it gives you control, right? You can't, we don't make all our people there. We, we still have people who get primary care uh, within the health system, but, you know, sometimes they're paying deductible and co-insurance. But we have uh, about 95% of our uh, Wisconsin employees go to uh, Cedar Ridge at least once a year. Um, time and cost, uh, really important uh, that they understand. Uh, we let people go uh, to the health center. We let them go to their appointments. We, uh, uh, we don't make them take time off to go, uh, and so we, we're allowing them to go. Um, focusing on long-term health outcomes, right? This is uh, where our wellness program starts. This is where those conversations start. Um, and so uh, that's really important. And keeping it in, keeping primary care out of the health systems so they don't go in for a sliver and get an MRI, right? And so, and at the same time, we already talked about uh, referring out to our preferred uh, contracted partners. Care navigation, um, I think, gets too little press. Um, it is one of the most important things that we do, and uh, I would say the highest payback um, of any of our plan design components. Because you think about it, you know, whatever you pay a care navigator, how many uh, procedures do can they help re redirect to centers of value um, before they've already paid for themselves, right? And the, the answer is if they were gonna go to Mayo Clinic for that $70,000 knee replacement, and the care navigator says, hey, we have this option, it's right here, it's uh, $22,500, right? They've paid for themselves, right? And it happens over and over again, uh, if not daily, at least weekly. Uh, it's a really important part of our plan design. But they need to know the plan. They really need to know the plan. They need to know what all the options are. They need to know how, to, how steerage works. They need to make sure that they're letting people know, you don't have to do this. Um, but these are, this, these are the benefits for you. Um, they need to, to maintain balance um, between uh, the member and their needs and the plan. They have to have some, they can't just, you know, everything for the member because it's not always good for the plan. So they have to have some balance. And like I said, it's critical uh, to our design. 
our wellness incentive. Uh, we tried a lot of different things, uh, and we tried uh, participation-based and then outcomes-based. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, it's very personal. Uh, it's hard to track. It's hard to gauge. Um, so now we're back to, um, to earn our wellness incentive. All you have to do is go to our uh, health center or um, to another provider and have a physical or wellness exam uh, once a year. And it's our opportunity to give back. Um, and on our plan, if you do that, uh, we give you 15% off of your employee contributions for the following year. Um, so again, a way for us to give back. And last but not least, um, it's really important to have trusted partners. Um, obviously, I've called out some of our uh, trusted partners here today, um, but we have others, uh, Neopath, uh, The Alliance, uh, BPA is our third-party administrator in Eau Claire. Uh, Optimum Therapies is uh, PT in Rice Lake in Eau Claire. And RX Benefits uh, is a relatively new partner in the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, they are the one PBM that will put their money where their mouth is. Um, they will do contracted guaranteed savings. Um, and they have done that for us. So um, those are the ones that I wanted to call out today. And last but not least, um, for those of you considering doing something like this, you have to be committed. I would say at least five years, um, and you're going to have one bad year in five. Um, we're, we're heading into year 10. This is uh, 2024 is the second bad year that we've had, um, but we're going to weather that storm. Um, so you have to be committed. You can't go in, oh, you know, first year is going to be great, right, because you're going to have claims lag. Um, then you hit second year, and if that happens to be your one bad year, you have to be committed. Um, so uh, for your partners, trust but verify. Uh, you get to know them uh, and their systems, and, and you think everything's going along, but you still have to, to check. Uh, and last but not least, steal shamelessly. Um, steal everything that I've put up here today. Uh, call me, uh, email me, do whatever. I'll give it to you. Um, but learn from others who have come before you. And, um, you know, again, that's what I'm here for today. This is my giving back. Why? Because it's going to get worse. Yeah. I kind of thought maybe I would be the only one to say this, but we heard this a few times yesterday. Um, I believe that transparency uh, and pricing is, is going to uh, create price fixing amongst the health system. Right. Think about what happened in the automobile industry when, you know, 15 years ago when you went to buy a car, you could negotiate. And you could go from one dealer to another. You could, you know, you could, you could negotiate. And then they went to this one low price, right? And all the dealers um, are all charging within $100 of each other for the same vehicle. Uh, I had this experience last fall, and it's still true. Um, and so they know if they set their prices and they leave them and they don't negotiate, they all make more money. I believe that that's what's going to happen with uh, pricing transparency in healthcare. Unfortunately, because a lot of us thought that that would be the panacea for uh, you know what's wrong with healthcare, I do not believe that that's true. Prescription drugs, uh, the, just the crazy pricing. Uh, Lynn Meldy, four and a quarter million dollars for one treatment but it cures, right? And if it was your kid uh, with that early childhood disease, you would certainly want it. Uh, Keytruda, $195,000 a year, right? But if it's your family member, if it's your father-in-law, right, you would want them to have that. And then I just added this, uh, the GLP ones. I had our uh, meeting, mid-year meeting with uh, RX Benefits last week. We have uh, spent $200,000 already this year, uh, going, going from zero last year to $200,000 added to our prescription plan, and is only going to go up. But as we heard yesterday, uh, you know, obesity is, is the leading cause of uh, lots of other things. So do you, is it, which one do you want to tackle? And then PFAS, polyfluoral alkyl substances, also known as, thanks, I got that. That's good, huh? Um, forever chemicals. Um, if you haven't heard about these, uh, we have an environmental specialist. She scared me to death. 
Um, the estimate for Wisconsin is five billion dollars a year in added healthcare costs because of these chemicals that have seeped into our groundwater and are everywhere. Um, and it is uh, something I just got the shivers uh, thinking about it um, and the instances of, of all these things that are happening. And it's not just cancer, it's a lot of other things uh, that may be being caused by PFAS. And last but not least, um, for-profit healthcare. Uh, you can say what you want. They call themselves non-for-profit. Um, that's not true. We heard about salaries yesterday, and uh, you know one of the uh, launching points for our plan was when the uh, the CEO of United Healthcare in, in Minneapolis uh, just the year before he got a hundred and three million dollar bonus. Uh, you know, and that's you know that's everybody's pain and suffering that he's uh, profiteering off of, and that stuff just pisses me off, right? And, you know, I don't know. There's uh, something to be said. Uh, I talked to uh, somebody here who's, um, you know, from the private equity side, and, you know, I think with my background in lean and, uh, you know, trying to squeeze blood out of a turn turnip in, in manufacturing, then maybe there's something there. Maybe private equity can come in. Maybe private equity can streamline things. Maybe private equity could actually lower price. Um, I have yet to see that in my lifetime. Um, had lots of clients that were in private equity. And uh, um, so I, I, it would have to be proven to me before that happens. All right. So now what y'all came for, well, what does it really, really mean? Well, with permission, um, for our plan participants, what we've done, uh, it has meant nine years with no cost increase. Um, our health, our employee contribution to healthcare is still just $20 a week. Thousand bucks a year, yeah. Nine million dollars for our participants in cost avoidance, right? Because their uh, how it was going up, and if we hadn't done anything there because of our price sharing scheme, their contributions would have kept going up. $2 million in real savings, right? When you don't have to pay deductibles, you don't have to pay coinsurance. Um, and no healthcare induced wage erosion. If your healthcare costs are going up faster than your employees' wages, that is healthcare induced wage erosion. I graphed it, I charted it, I showed it to our owners. I said, these people, particularly those making less than $45,000 a year, they were actually making less because of what they had to pay for health care. Right. And last but not least, what has it meant to our business? We've cost avoided over $24 million uh, in the last seven years. Um, and that's versus trend. Okay, well, you don't know for sure if trend would have held. You know, it's 7%, that's still a pretty low trend. Um, if it had just stayed flat, we still have avoided $14 million. Um, well, Jake, you look at your graph, right? And your, your costs are going up here. Well, 2020, I don't count that, that's COVID. Um, a lot of extraordinary expenses. Well, then your costs are going up again uh, starting three years ago. Yes, uh, after COVID, we've added back about 100 employees, uh, which means you know a couple hundred members to our plan. And so we expect our, our costs to, to continue to go up. So that is the Rice Lake Weighing System success story. Um, how am I doing on time? I'm out of time. I came all this way. Are there any questions? Awesome. No? All right. Can you talk a little bit more about your wellness plan? Yeah. Uh, the question is uh, about our wellness plan. And again, we try to keep it simple. Um, we, we try to do outcomes-based, right? If you lose weight, if you uh, stay on this plan, if you you know, do these things, and they were doing that with their provider, setting those up. We never knew what their goal was. Um, it was just really cumbersome. It was really hard to manage. And so we went back to what do we really want, right? We want people to take control of their health. Um, and so going and seeing a provider, healthcare provider, at least once a year, um, that was good enough for us. So who is the provider that was helping out the weight management? Yeah. 
Well, maybe we're fortunate because we have an awesome provider at Cedar Ridge Health Center, uh, Dr. Tracy Harris. She's, uh, she's incredible, and uh, that is one of her fortes among many. Um, so she was helping out uh, with those kinds of things. But also chronic disease management, other uh, issues that they might have. Um, but now it's more personal. It's between the provider and that person. And if they go in, again, that's good enough for us. Yeah. Uh, so the question is about the incentive. Um, and when we started out, uh, we said, well, we kind of picked a number out of the hat. We said, well, how about a 10% reduction um, in, the, uh, in the baseline price? And so that's what we did. Um, a few years ago, we upped it to 15%. Um, and again, all they have to do is participate. And then they get that off of the next year's um, contributions. Did I answer your question? This year, next year, yeah. we um, we started the wellness program before we started the incentive. Gotcha. So, okay. I see somebody over here. Yeah. Oh, we do not have HSA. Um, we have FSA. Um, but again, they don't. There's not much in our health plan that they need it for. Um, other than if they're paying deductible and coinsurance. And so we have had a lot of people actually reduce their FSA contributions. Uh, HSA, I know um, there are some legalities with this. Um, I will tell you, if you do the research, um, no health plan has ever been investigated um, for HSA violations uh, that I can find anywhere. So. Okay, so the question is, who are we using for care navigation? Um, for uh, seven or eight years, we used Alethius, a Wisconsin-based company, uh, Ross Biella. A lot of you probably know him. This year, we decided to bring it in-house, um, and we had our medical assistant at, the, uh, at our clinic. Uh, we trained her uh, for about six months uh, before we <laughs> uh, dumped her into the fire. And, uh, and we have several other people at Neopath who have participated in that and learned uh, about care navigation and how to get it to them. Uh, for us, uh, I think that is the best option. Uh, one plan, one plan design, one organization, um, and direct contract contact with those people. So that worked really well for us. Yeah, the question was about engaging politicians and I try to avoid it whenever I can. Um, but we have been successful, um, and a good example is uh, last year with the white bagging initiative uh, that the Wisconsin Hospital Association was trying to force onto all of the self-insured plans. And uh, there was a grassroots group. We, we came together. Uh, we got with our politicians, and we said, we don't want to do this. This isn't good for our health plan. This isn't good for uh, our patients, and uh, successfully helped our politicians defeat that. Um, so that was uh, a good example of uh, engaging in our own best interest. All right. I'm getting the hook. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Ooh. Thanks.